Let us start with a brief introduction to the UK tax system. The UK government raises in the region of £400 billion in taxation each year. This is broadly split as follows. Income tax is the single largest earner for the government, making up 32% of total revenue. Income tax is charged on salaries from employment, on rental income from properties let out, on interest from banks and building societies, on dividends from companies, and on the profits of the self-employed. The second largest earner for the government is national insurance contributions, or NICs. This makes up 22% of total government income. National insurance contributions are generally paid by employers and employees on earnings from employment although NICs are also levied on self-employed persons on the profits of their trade. Value-added tax, or VAT, makes up about 21% of the total government revenue and is charged by businesses to customers on supplies of goods or services in the UK. You will see that income tax, value-added tax and national insurance are the three most important taxes as far as raising money is concerned, making up 75% of total government revenue. A large part of the remainder, 11%, is made up of duties. By duties, we're talking about taxes on alcohol, petrol and tobacco, as well as certain levies on goods coming into the UK. Corporation tax makes up about 9% of total government revenue, being the tax paid by UK companies on their taxable profits. The remaining slice is from capital taxes and green taxes. Capital taxes are capital gains tax, inheritance tax, stamp duty and stamp duty land tax. Capital gains tax is the tax levied when individuals sell assets and make a profit. Green taxes include aggregates levy and air passenger duty. The taxation of capital gains is quite important if you are studying for examination purposes, although in the grand scheme of things it doesn't make an awful lot of money for the government. For the remainder of this module we're going to concentrate on income tax and we're going to start by having a look at the income tax computation. You'll be aware that individuals pay income tax by reference to the tax year. The UK tax year runs from the 6th of April to the following 5th of April. For example, the tax year that begins on the 6th of April 2012 and ends on the 5th of April 2013 is known as the tax year 2012-13. The tax rates and tax allowances for the 2012-13 tax year were set in the Finance Act 2012. In this course, we will be preparing income tax computations for the 2012-13 tax year, and we'll be looking at tax law as it stands up to and including the Finance Act 2012. As we shall see, there are two stages in calculating an individual's tax liability. The first thing we need to do is to arrive at an individual's taxable income from all sources in the relevant tax year. Having arrived at taxable income, we shall then apply the 2012-13 tax rates and allowances to that income to arrive at the tax liability for the year. This tax will then be collected by HMRC under the self-assessment system, but we shall deal with this in a later module. The tax legislation categorises various sources of income. Each type of income has its own special rules. This is why we need to decide what type of income an individual has received. The first type of income to consider is trading income. This covers profits from a trade. So, for instance, a self-employed person in business as a taxi driver or a market trader or a builder or plumber would be taxed on his trading income. Trading income also covers profits from a profession or vocation. 
So, for instance, a self-employed professional such as a solicitor or barrister would also have trading income. The next type of income we need to consider is property income. This is income from land and buildings, such as rental income. Property income from UK land and buildings is kept separate from income from non-UK properties. Next, there is a very important type of income called income from earnings and pensions. Earnings covers salaries, bonuses and non-cash benefits. We will look at these in detail in later sessions. There are various types of savings and investment income. The most common one is interest arising from UK banks and building societies. We call this interest income. Another type of investment income is dividends received from companies. As we will see later, dividend income needs to be kept separate from other types of investment income because it has different rates of tax applied to it. These are the two main types of savings and investment income. But there are some others, which we will explain more about later in this course. An individual may have income from outside the UK. We have already seen that he may have property income from non-UK land and buildings. He may also have investment income from outside the UK, such as non-UK bank interest or non-UK dividends. All income arising outside the UK is now called foreign income. It is important to note here that income can still be taxable in the UK even if it arises from a source outside the UK. As a general principle, individuals who live in the UK and who were born in the UK will pay UK income tax on their worldwide income, wherever it comes from. So, a UK resident will pay income tax on foreign income. Finally, there is income which is chargeable to income tax which does not fall within any of the categories that we have just looked at. This is called miscellaneous income. It is the revenues way of covering itself and making sure that taxable income doesn't fall through the net. There are a few sources of income which are specifically exempt from income tax. You won't be surprised to know that this list is not particularly long. Income from national savings certificates is exempt from tax, as are any winnings on premium bonds. As a general principle, any income from betting, gaming or lotteries is exempt from income tax. Many social security benefits are also exempt from income tax. For example, housing benefit and winter fuel allowances for pensioners. The notable exceptions are the state pension and any job seekers allowances. Child benefit is not taxable, although from the 7th of January 2013, a high income child benefit charge applies where a recipient or their partner has adjusted net income in excess of £50,000. We will look at this in more detail in a later session. State pension and job seekers allowances are taxable income. Scholarship awards are exempt as is any income from ISAs, individual savings accounts. Dividends paid on the first £200,000 of Venture Capital Trust shares acquired in any tax year are also exempt from income tax. Let us now check our understanding of this session by doing a short quiz. Simply click on the sources of income now on your screen which you think are exempt from income tax. Press the Check Answer button at the bottom when you have finished. Interest on a national savings account is taxable and is categorised as interest income. Dividends from a foreign company are also taxable. Remember that just because the income arises outside the UK, the income will still be taxable. Wages are taxable as employment income. The fact that they are paid to a child is irrelevant. However, in most instances, the income will be covered by personal allowances, as we shall look at in the next session. Income from national savings certificates is exempt. 
make sure you differentiate between this and other national savings products, income from which is generally taxable. Housing benefit is exempt. However, the state retirement pension is taxable income. State pension is one of the handful of social security benefits which is not exempt from income tax. That concludes this introduction to the UK tax system. In the next lecture, we'll move on and have a look at how we put together an income tax computation.